Hi folks, welcome back. So this time, in this little capacitors explained section, we're going to talk about constant voltage capacitor charging. I told you this was a constant current, when really, it's actually the output of the op amp is applying a constant voltage. But let's have a look at what is actually going on with this constant voltage thing. Okay, so let's have a look at this and think about what's going to happen when we apply a constant voltage and see how it differs from that constant current that we were just talking about. It's a little bit more complicated, but we're going to look at it in a way which allows us to skip over all the complex maths and things that you might have to do and just intuitively have a look and be like, oh, okay, and we can see immediately what's going to happen. So we apply 10 volts to this point here, and what happens next? Well, let's start with what we do know. We know Ohm's law. Okay, so we know this was zero. You know, we had no voltage applied to this. So I think it makes sense that we can say that this point here is again zero, because how could it be anything but zero? So we've got zero volts here, and we're going to have 10 volts here. So we're going to have some current flow this way. And let's assume that at our output, we're not drawing any current. So this current is going to go across here and down to ground through this capacitor. Okay, so if we were assuming it was a constant current like we had last time, then we might say, oh, so the voltage across this capacitor is just going to linearly rise until it reaches 10 volts. But that's not what happens. Unfortunately, it's slightly more complicated than that. You'd be correct if you thought that the voltage on the cap would rise, because as we know from before, we, we know we've got a current here, so there's current flowing down here, and we, remember we said when we've got a current flows through a capacitor, we get a changing voltage. And so we've got a positive current, so we're going to get a positive change. So the voltage across this capacitor is going to rise. It's just not linearly. And the reason for that is not immediately obvious. But as the voltage across this capacitor starts to rise, the other thing you have to remember is that we've only got 10 volts here. So watch my Circuits 101 video if you want more information on this. But there's this thing in electronics called Kirchhoff's voltage law, which essentially tells us if we put 10 volts in here, then all of that 10 volts has to be dropped across these two components. So here we've got all 10 volts dropped across this resistor, so we've got none dropped across this uh, capacitor. So if we now say we've got one volt across the capacitor, then that means that there's only nine volts left to be dropped over this resistor. And now if we look at our Ohm's law, divide through by R, remember, will give us the current. So now, if the voltage is dropping, because this is charging up the entire time, so while there's current flowing, this is charging up. But that voltage is dropping, and so the current is going to drop as well. And so, as this current drops, the charging rate of the capacitor also drops. So you get a curve that looks like this. So this is the kind of curve that you get. And you see, we get a nice smooth charge, but it, as we approach this voltage, and this voltage is the supply voltage, 10 volts, it slows down and it gets slower and slower and slower and slower, and it will never actually reach that charging voltage. And just to be clear, the reason for that is that this voltage we're seeing here is the voltage of the output, which is the voltage across the capacitor. And so you can see, as it's charging up and up and up, this voltage is going down and down and down and down. So if I draw down here the voltage across this resistor, that will look like this, because we've only got 10 volts, so as this approaches 10 volts, this has to approach zero. So that's all well and good, and that's very cool and interesting, but it's not particularly useful to know this without knowing some rough kind of rules of thumb that we can use to actually put this into action. So what I'll tell you for free is that there's a period of time that we call the RC time constant. And by RC, I mean the resistance value times the capacitance value. And that tells us approximately the time it takes for this capacitor to charge up to two thirds of the supply voltage. So our V in is 10 volts, two thirds of that, let's call it about 6.7 volts, and it will take one RC time constant to get there. And so if we, if we just pop some nice simple values in here, if we say the resistor here is one kilo ohm, and this capacitor is one microfarad, then that means one kilo ohm times one microfarad will give us one millisecond time constant here. So after one millisecond, we've gotten two thirds of the way to 10 volts. And now, and now maybe have a pause the video and think, what's the voltage going to be after two milliseconds? So after two milliseconds, we'll be two thirds of the rest of the way there. If we're now starting at 6.7 volts, so we've got 3.3 volts left over. So now after another time constant, we're going to be two thirds of the rest of the way there. So it's going to be this plus 2.2, which is two thirds of 3.3. So we'll be at this point here. 8.9 volts. 
and then after another time constant will be two thirds of the way there, and another will be two thirds of the further, and another, and another, and another, and it, it could go on forever. Now that, again, there's another rule of thumb that we use, which is that after five time constants, will be 99% of the way there. So these are really easy to calculate, easy to use rules of thumb to calculate the charging times with a constant voltage. And it's the same, but the other way round, if we're discharging. So if we follow this through now, and we've now discharged, well, what's going to happen at the output? Let me redraw this. So let's say we've set this so that this on period lasts five milliseconds. So this capacitor is basically fully charged when it switches. So now it's gone off. So now we're here in time. So let's draw on some voltages, shall we? So we know we're going to approximate this to 10 volts. So this is 10 volts. This is zero volts. So we can obviously see we're just going to get the reverse action. Current is now going to flow this way. And now we've got a negative current. So we're going to get a negative going changing voltage with this exponential, that's the name of this shape of curve. And for the same reason, because now there's, at the moment, there's a 10 volt potential difference. But as this capacitor discharges, this voltage here is gonna drop. And that means that the current going through this resistor is gonna drop. And that means that the rate of change of voltage is going to drop as well. So the discharge will slow down. And we'll see the opposite curve. And it looks like this. And then if this went high again, you get the same thing. So we've seen these curves before. We can look at this configuration as a low pass filter. I've done a whole video on RC passive filters, which you can go and check out if you want to know more about that. But for now, all we need to know is that when we're looking at this in the frequency domain, which is just a fancy name for when we're thinking about the frequencies, we can look at this as a filter. But now we're looking at it in the time domain, which is basically when we're looking at how signals change with time, it does this. And there's one other thing you might see this circuit referred to as, which is an integrator. So this is a term that comes from maths, and I don't want you to concern yourself about what that means. I want you, if you ever see something referred to as an integrator, to just remember that all it is is some sort of low-pass filter, but we're just talking about how it changes the shape of the signal instead of how it changes the frequencies. And that's all you need to worry about. Okay, so now let's do the same analysis, but we'll flip the two things around. So again, we start with everything is zero volts, and we apply this 10 volts pulse. Now what's going to happen a moment after this pulse goes? I want to use this as an opportunity to teach you probably one of the subtler things about this little capacitor equation, we call it. It's a subtle but very important thing that this is trying to tell you. So what we've been doing is we've been looking at the voltage across the capacitor, looking at how that's changing, and thinking about how that affects the current. And what that's trying to tell us is that when we have this which we can approximate as an instant change in voltage. If we wanted the voltage across the capacitor to change instantly, then we would need an infinitely large current. So if this voltage changing with time thingy wanted to be infinitely quick, you would need an infinitely large current to do that. And obviously we know from just real life experience that we don't have an infinite amount of current, we've got a finite amount of current. So what that tells us is that the voltage across the capacitor can't change instantly. It can actually only change relatively slowly. And that gives us an important piece of information that makes it quite straightforward to analyse this circuit, which at first is quite confusing, I think. What it's telling us is that if at this fraction of time, just before that goes high, we had zero volts across this capacitor, then at the fraction of time, just a nanosecond less than that after this pulse has gone high, then this capacitor still has zero volts across it because it can only change slowly. So if we're looking at the instant that it goes high, this still has zero volts across it. So that means that if we had 10 volts at the input, we've got 10 volts here as well. So unlike a resistor, for example, and it had zero volts here to begin with, and we applied 10 volts here, well, we would just have 10 volts across that and we'd have a current that flowed this way. But capacitors do not do that when they have a very quick change, so if we had zero volts and then we applied 10 volts, the other side just instantly goes to 10 volts. And that's kind of weird to get your head around, but this is what we kind of know about capacitors, is that capacitors let changing voltages through and they stop DC voltages. You know, there's a classic meme that tells us exactly that. And this is what that meme is trying to say. Sudden changes in the input get passed to the other side of a capacitor. And now we've got 10 volts, and we've got zero volts, 
So now we're going to have the exact same kind of behaviour. We've got 10 volts here, current's going to flow this way, V over R equals I, Ohm's law, all that kind of stuff. And then that's going to cause a current to flow through the capacitor down here, and that current flowing through the capacitor is going to charge it up. And as the capacitor charges up, the voltage at this point is going to fall. Remember, we've got it the other way around. So now the capacitor is charging up, so the voltage across the capacitor is rising. And so now we've got 10 volts here, we've got a rising voltage across here, so the voltage at this point is going to be the input voltage minus whatever voltage is across here. So if we draw the output voltage, okay, and that's kind of what we should have expected because this is what the voltage across the resistor looked like last time. The only difference is now we're taking the output across the resistor instead of we're taking it across the capacitor. But looking at it this way forced us to kind of think about the way the capacitor reacts to sudden changes, and that's why I've shown it to you. So this is the output or the voltage across the resistor. You know, we're taking the voltage in parallel with the resistor here. This was the input voltage, remember? Let me draw that for you. And the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, and let's just remember for completeness that the RC time constant, so you can look at it two ways. Either the voltage at the output is going to have fallen to one third of V in, but that's because the capacitor in that time, the capacitor has charged up to two thirds of V in and kind of subtracted that voltage away from the voltage across the resistor. Okay, so let's carry this one on as well. So let's see what happens when this goes negative. Okay, so now we're going to be right at this instant here, just as it goes to zero. So this input voltage is now zero volts. There still has to be 10 volts across this capacitor because the voltage across the capacitor can't change instantly. Now this is a kind of a bit of a trap. The voltage here is not 10 volts, it's minus 10 volts. Because remember, by convention, we had a conventional current flowing this way, so the voltage drop was like this. So remember, we were subtracting the voltage across the capacitor away from the input voltage before, and that doesn't change just because the input voltage has gone to zero. So now the output voltage at this instant is minus 10 volts. We've got this negative going spike here that's minus 10 volts, and now we're going to get the exact same thing all over again. Now we've got minus 10 volts, we've got ground here, so we've got a 10 volt difference across here. So now there's going to be a conventional current that's going to flow from ground to minus 10, because conventional current always flows from positive to negative, and so there's going to be a current that flows this way and discharges the capacitor. You can eat, there's a couple of ways you can think about it. You can think the current comes up this way and it hits this minus sign first, so it's discharging it, or you can think on its way out, we're taking positive charge off of the capacitor. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's draw this all the way out from start to finish. Okay, so there are all the voltages. So we've got, this is our input voltage, and then we can see the big takeaway here is that this sudden change in the input gets passed straight through the capacitor to the output, and then as the capacitor charges up, the output voltage drops until we switch the input negative, and then again, that quick negative change in the input gets passed to the output, and then the capacitor discharges back to zero. This is the capacitor discharging back to zero. So I hope that's clear. And just for completeness, this circuit has an unnecessarily scary sounding maths name, and it's called a differentiator. And again, you know, this is just a high pass filter in the frequency domain, but when we're looking in the time domain, we call it a differentiator. Don't worry about what it means, just know that it only responds to changes in the input. You can see here, like these static bits, there's no output. When there's a change, there's an output. And then these static bits, there's little change in the output. You know, there's some because there's always going to be some resistance. If this was a, you know, if you could get a perfect capacitor that had no resistance, then you would get an infinitely short spike here, and an infinitely short negative spike. I've exaggerated these curves so that you can see them, but these steady periods, you know, give very little change in the voltage, and then these negative going changes get passed through to the output, and again, these steady periods do little to change the output. So that's a differentiator, and that's all for charging a capacitor with a constant voltage. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Come back next time where we're going to go on to talk about the frequency effects of capacitors in a little bit more detail than we have done. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Ring the bell. Find me on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, watch more of my videos here, some over here.
and I'll see you all next time. Take care.